craft. Good morning, and today we're looking at the yaw control of the drone. And if you look at our little drone here, this is a, well, it's a drone that we fly. Um, and the yaw control is works like this, and we're going to do a yawing motion of that former in hot bath. Now the drone itself has got two clockwise rotating and two anti-clockwise rotating propellers. So if you slow these two down and speed these up, you'll get a yawing motion. And that's the basic thinking behind the design or the control really of the drone in, in yaw. So let's have a look now how it works. Here's a little drum, two going round clockwise, two going round anti-clockwise. If we slow these two up, then there's less torque from these, more torque from these, the set's going to start to yaw in a certain direction. Now, the mathematical modelling for this is quite straightforward. Um, it's more or less sitting in space because you're just hovering, there's very little friction. Um, so we can apply the equation at t equals i times the uh, yaw acceleration. So that's going to be, uh, we use yaw as the output of this, it's going to be yaw double dot which gives us a transfer function between yaw and the torque developed by the motors as just simply 1 over s squared. And then we've got the motors themselves, and we've got little motors in here, which are have to speed up and slow down. And these can be measured by k over s plus a. And so the overall transfer function for the open loop system look at it is the voltage applied here. Uh, the motor providing a uh, torque then that giving us a yaw rate, integrate the yaw rate and we get the yaw angle. And if we put this into a control system, the one we're implementing, it's a proportional plus derivative controller, so we've got some derivative control around this way and some proportional control around there. But this doesn't lend itself very well to low side design. So we repose this problem in our standard form, K1S plus K2. We can then use root low side design methods now to get K1 and K2. And then we can go from this design back to this one, knowing simply that K1 is KD and K1 times K2 is KP. So this is then the underlying philosophy for our uh, your control of the drone. And it comes down to a relatively straightforward root low side design in which we can use the angle and magnitude criteria now to actually figure out good values for K1 and K2 and therefore KP and KD. Once we've done our designs, we load the, the controllers onto the drone and see how it flies. And what we're going to do is we're going to look at a range of damping ratios for this and a range of performances for the drone, going from very lightly damped, where it's going to yaw something like that, to quite heavily damped, where it's going to yaw very slowly. So we look at a range of designs using these techniques. Right, so next thing we do is I use the angle and magnitude criteria to work out some suitable controller uh, for the system. Um, we've actually modelled the system. We've worked out K as 1500 and the uh, pole here at 400, so let's get minus 400, and we've got one over s squared here. So if we start plotting our root low sign out, well, before we really start that, we need to figure out our design conditions. So we need the complex conjugate roots now of this system to be have certain, the dominant complex conjugate roots to have certain properties. So this is modeled by the s squared plus two zeta omega and s plus omega n squared equation. And we're going to choose omega n as 14.4 radians per second and damping of 0.7. And this gives me a, I've got these numbers in here, s squared plus 20s plus 207 and pointing out. I've chosen these particular, it's a bit of a cheap disk anyway, and that gives me an s, it's minus 10 plus minus 10j. So it makes it easy for me to plot it in my diagram. So this is my design point. Uh, where the complex root is at minus 10 plus minus 10 j, which can be a damping of 0.7, hardly an overshoot, and an actual frequency quite fast, 14.4 radians per second. So if we take this point now 
and this is the point now in so we plot now our, our Venn diagram that's imaginary against real and I've chosen scales of, of 10 on this particular diagram and so this is the point here now minus 10 plus 10 j and I've got two poles at the origin here and I've got another pole all the way down here somewhere at minus 400 so that's going to be a really long way down there um, so what we do now is we apply the angle criteria so we draw lines from this point to the poles and we're eventually to the zero we don't know where the zero is yet so we're going to have a zero somewhere along here which corresponds to the, to the k2 value and we can get this by using the angle criteria so we've got alpha 1 which is the angle associated with the zero that we don't know that's going to be beta 1 plus beta 2 plus beta 3. So beta 1 and beta 2, you can see if that's minus 10, that is going to be 135. Um, we, don't, we don't need the protractor. We don't need the protractor in this case. Well, if I did put it on this, it would be exactly 135 degrees. Because um, this is at minus, this is 45 there, isn't it? So that's a lucky angle for us. Um, and this angle here, minus 400, this angle here is almost zero. It's about, I did work it out, it's about one degree. So the angle coming off the beta 1 and beta 2 are 135, and the beta 3 is about one degree. So if we solve this equation then, we get alpha coming up more or less at 90 degrees. It's about probably um, 89 or degrees, so it's, it's quite close to 90. So we can draw this now in. 90, so right, right, angle 90 is quite easy, isn't it? I'm just going to go straight down here like this. So that means this angle here now, alpha 1, is 90 degrees, and that's going to cut you exactly 10. Because that's at 10, it's 90 degrees, so it's nice. I couldn't believe how simple this came out in the end. Um, so that means now that K2 is at, this distance is K2. So that's at minus 10, so K2 is 10. So we get K2 as 10. And then, when we got that then, we can go off now to apply the magnitude criteria. So, um, again, we could take measurements of this, but because of the particular type of diagram we've got, where this is at minus 400, we can't take measurements of this. We'll have to do Pythagoras on it. Um, we know that distance there, though, is 14.4 don't we because we figured that out anyway so this one is 14.4 that's from there to there and uh, we know from there to there will be exactly 10 don't we and we could use pythagoras on this bit because we know that we've got that's uh 400 and that's 10. we could use pythagoras to get that one it would be the square root of 400 squared plus 10 squared be about 400 and probably 412 is now probably 8. So we can then stick those numbers into the magnitude criteria to get our K1. So for the magnitude criteria, um, we're just going to state now that 1500 times K1 times the zero distance, which in this case would be 10, because from there to there is 10, divided by these distances of 14.4 times 14.4. Now if we call that distance there x, I am not actually worked it out, but you can see it would be around the 400 mark, would it? Times x equal to 1. And then we can solve this expression now for k1. And k1 comes out as 5.27. So, K1. So this is now 5.27. So here's our final control now, 5.27 S plus 10. So in our actual design now, remember this is the, so we know now that uh, KD will be the same as K1, so that will be 5.27. And KP will be that times that, which will be 52, 52.7. So when we come to implement this on the drone, we don't implement it in this format. 
implement it in a slightly different format, but it's the same basic idea. Um, so what we've got this time is we've got this going on, that's a one over s there, a one over s there, and that's the new and that's the new rate. So in here we've got the KD, which is 5.27, and here and here we've got the one which is 52.7 so this is the design now when we've got the drone we enter these two numbers into the drone and this is our overall flight control system for controlling the drone and what we're hoping to do now is have a range of damping ratios um, say all the way from say about 0.2 all the way up to damping of 0.4 0.7 one, even bigger than one, say one, one, two or something. So we'll have it very lightly damped all the way through to very heavily damped. And then look at the performance of the drone as it actually flies. And what I'm hoping to do, uh, we'll see how it goes, is get the drone to come up, point towards you, and then do a little one radian turn. So one radian is about 57 degrees. So it's going to be sitting looking at you, and it's going to turn by 57 degrees, and we can see how well it does that that task so this is the design now of our your damper for the drone it's um, a nice clean simple little model very little friction in the air so it's going to be this part here is going to be reasonably accurate isn't there's no much friction in this um, and this is the only bit that's questionable is the motor but this is what i've figured out the motor to be and then that gives us our, our controller designs them. And so this is an example now I've used an angle of magnitude for here to design your controller for the drone. Right, this is the uh, Mambo, your control system. And if we have a look at the overall architecture, of the simulation there's a flight control system inside here non-linear simulation here state estimator here some sensor dynamics and some visuals the bit that we're interested in is the flight control system and that's this block here and it also has a visual input to help with the xy now the actual control systems itself on the drone consist of six PID control loops. There's a PID control loop on height, pitch, roll, X and Y. The one we're looking at today is the PID controller number five on your. It's actually a PD controller and this is where the proportional gain goes in and this is where the derivative go gain goes in. The drone you can think of um, as having four motors and four main things you want to control height, roll, pitch, and yaw. And the motors are connected up to this decoupling matrix here, which essentially control the things. If we look at yaw, a yaw will mean that um, motor one will go positive, motor two negative, motor three negative, and motor four positive. So if we look at this motor one and four, that's one and four go positive, two and three go negative. And the reason for this is that the one and four are going around clockwise and two and three go around anti-clockwise. So if these two go around clockwise and these two go anti-clockwise, if you speed these up, and slow these down, there'll be a net yaw in this direction we can use that force then to yaw the helicopter. Now, the actual control system itself, we have the simulation in Simulink, and we click on this box here um, to activate the actual flight control system. So we click on that block and we send it as a open as top model. This is how the tickle software works. And then the software block comes up like this. We can then click on this block here 
and we can change the control of gains in here. Once you've changed those gains, we can then go to here and we click on build and deploy. Build and deploy then downloads the software into the drone and up comes this little window. We then press, we send the power level up to 100% and click on the start button. Once you've clicked on the start button, it says preparing for takeoff, which means it's ready to go. And then just before the flight starts, it says mini drone flight started. Now we've got a stop button or a land button. So if we can stop the flight, we can press stop. If we want to land the drone in town, we can press land if things are getting out of control. And at this point now, the drone will start to fly. And when the drone has completed its, its, its mission, it will land and say flight completed. Once the flight has been completed, we then click on this button here, MATLAB file, and it downloads the flight data into the MATLAB directory. And it comes down as rsdata.mat. So if we double click on that, the data gets loaded in. And then we've got a little program here, which plots some variables out. And it plots height against time, X and Y against time, and yaw against time. And the one we're looking at in this particular case is a yaw. And we're putting a set point of one radian onto the yaw after five seconds. So typical response times now. This is a very lightly damped response from the quad because it's only got a gain of 0 0.0001. And we can see we've got this, this transient response here um, from the quad. And you can see there's quite a bit of motion in X and Y. And around the point here where we did the change at five seconds, there's also a bit of disturbance in the height, although it isn't that bad. It's controlling to point one, it keeps it fairly level. It does eventually get control of X and Y as well, but the, the yaw is very pure. You can see it's a very pure signal. It just does pure yaw, which is which is nice and indicates maybe we should be able to get a good transfer function for that one. So our first design is this one. And what we're going to be looking at is we've done a root low side design here of our, here's our um, block diagram, transfer functions in there. And we've done a root low side design such that we've got a damping ratio of 0.1 and a natural frequency of about 14. Uh, and these are where our complex roots are. And the KD value wing is comes out as um, that's some value which I've not worked out. But we can look at two things really. We can look at the transient response, this closed loop system now, which is what we get here. And this is the transient response of our drone, the real one. So this is the transient response of the simulation. And this is the transient response of the drone. And you can see there's a good similarity between the two. And now what we can do is watch three test flights under this condition. Okay, so here's our second design now. So this is the same transfer function. This time we've decided to we keep the natural frequency around 14 and we can increase the damping ratio to 0.25. So it's got more damping on it this time. We're keeping the proportional gain from the root low say plot at 50, so this number is 50. And this time the one has increased to two. So here's the root low say. Um, MATLAB code. If we run that code, we get this thing here, and we can then choose off this the gain of 50, 
put 50 in there, having chosen that as 2. And this is the transient response we get from the simulation. And this is the transient response now that we get from the your the real drone. So you can see again, very good correlation between the simulation and the drone response. So what we can do now is have a look now at the drone response with a damping ratio of 0.25. So here's our next design. We've still got natural frequency of three. This time we've increased the damping to about 0.54. So it's extra damping, we're getting less overshoot. So here's our MATLAB code that we've got here. And um, we've got a four in here now. So it's a, putting more damping in to get the damping to 0.54. We've ranged it. So it's again the root, on the root low set plot. This gain is 50. So if we had this root loss set code, we get this root loss set plot, we have a temperature of 0.54 and natural frequency of 14 and the gain would be 50 to be consistent with this and here now is the simulation that we get if we simulate this closed loop system and here's the actual drone, a real flight. So again we can see there's a remarkably good similarity between the two. So what we'll look at next is the drone now flying under these flight conditions. Okay, so in this case, we've gone for the critically damped case. Um, and in order to get this, we've got our code here and we've changed the derivative gain until we've got a damping ratio close to one and a gain again of 50. So this gain's remained at 50. With seven here, we have essentially a damping ratio of one. So it's critically damped, again, natural frequency about 14. So it's critically damped and here now, is the simulation showing almost a very fast response, no overshoot at all, critically damped. And here is the Muir in the real helicopter, very nice uh, response, very little, no overshoot, critically damped. And so let's look now at the critically damped flight of the of the drone. And this time you notice it's it's more stable and it's much happier with this critically damped design implemented on it, again with the gain of seven. So here's our final design where we've increased the gain from 7 to 40. Now, increasing the gain to 40 will make the system over damped. The damping will be way over 1. That's indicated by the, this is the code for the root low, say with the 40 in here. Now what happens is the damping, there's no imaginary part to the 
to the uh, response at all. It's just purely real and the frequency has really dropped down because it's a very slow response. So if we look at our simulation now with the 14, just to see a very heavily damped response. This is the very heavily damped response now that we've got in the drone simulation. And when we apply these numbers on the real drone, again, we can see a heavily damped response from the real drone. Um, I found this gain, the drone wasn't as happy as with seven. So let's look now, finally, at the transient response of the system. That, and what happened this time, the drone will really move slowly. You'll be able to see, before you could hardly see it move. Now you can sort of see it moving slowly. So this is the slow movement now associated with the very heavily damped. And we can watch the real drone next.